Here we are. Welcome, everyone, to an interview series that is starting today. It's called Miami Real Heads. This is volume one. I'm here with A-Hole and Carrie. Um, the reason why they are Real Heads, volume one, um, and the reason why we wanted to have them here today for the Divine Nymphs Telethon Mint Apocalypse um, is because both of you are community leaders in your own different ways in this city. And I kind of want to talk about, as community le leaders over the past, like, 10 years, the transition you've seen the city take. Um, there's, like, uh, the context of art, but there's also the context of technology and the context and how they swim together. And that's something that both of you are, like, sort of deep in. And so just to start, like, uh, with a really, like, specific question, like, if you could describe the transition, like, when you look over the past 10 years of Miami, the gentrification, the art and the crypto and the tech and everything, like what is, how do you summarize that from your experience? Uh, I mean, from what I see, like the way that things have changed, I think that all signs are pointing to that you kind of have to fend for yourself and you kind of have to like hold each other down as far as like the people that you deem are the real ones or your friends or the ones that you want to keep around. I think it may have been like that for a while, but it's now more apparent, like with things getting more expensive, uh, people getting run out of like where they've been. I think it, if we want to make this place work for ourselves, whatever situation we're in, I think that it's up to us. So I think that's what the change has been for me. It's gotten like harder and more like um, dog eat dog in a way. It feels like it. I mean, I would think that, but other than that, like I'm also seeing it from a different perspective of like where I know what I want and I'm just going a million miles an hour and I'm able to kind of sympathize with the way that I came up and like not leave it behind and not and refuse to change and I feel that it shouldn't be that hard but there are like a lot of like people going through some stuff and I see it like it's more apparent now than ever yeah you know for sure for sure what about you Carrie <clears throat> well for me um I see, especially for me, I live in Wynwood. I've been in Wynwood for a long time. So I've seen a lot, like a long time. So for me, there, the tech has always been there. It's just that it wasn't very out in the open. For example, like the lab opened up, which is a co-working space for tech startups. And um, we had a lot of things coming through, like Live Ninja was a company that was in Wynwood. They used to have Waffle Wednesdays. This is about 10 years ago. Um, Emerge Americas is a huge conference. So we had a lot of things happening, but it wasn't as uh, merged as it has become. So I see it in a progressive manner from my point of view. Being in Wynwood that I call Wynwood 4.0 right now, which is um, a lot of tech companies have come in, whether they're crypto related or not. Like a lot of companies have come in. There's a lot of mid-rise buildings coming in. So people are gonna be using those as like, a mixed use, so it can be a bedroom, it could be an office, it's gonna be a lot of that. And for me, I see a lot more collision in that kind of way. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's like the communities within these areas of like Miami have like transitioned and undergone this like dramatic transition, you know? Um, and okay, and so that kind of leads me to my next thing one of the things that I think you're both really good at in your own way, like I said earlier, like is community, you're community leaders, but I think you both sort of like foster and um, build community in different ways. And so this time we'll start with Carrie. So Carrie, I think that you, you have this like alpha in that if you go to like a tech or crypto event or really just like any kind of cool event, Usually, you know, like Carrie's there and like, you know, her, and you have a friend, you're like, oh my God, Carrie's here. And you oh, go God. and like, you say hi, <laughs> like you, um, you're, you're almost omnipresent in the, the sort of like our crypto tech community. Like, is there alpha in that? Like, how, to tell us about like how you see like the value and just like showing up and like knowing people and being there and being like <clears throat> friendly, which is what you were to me. Yeah. Being present is everything like networking, going to events. Art Basel's coming up, and there's gonna be a huge tech conference scene going along with it. So for me, I got an e-scooter so I can navigate this Art Basel, going to the convention center, going to Design Miami, Art Miami, like the big fairs, but then also going to the tech conferences because it's really important for me to see what's happening 
all the time. And I'm just kind of like capable of that. I don't watch TV or anything. Like that is my entertainment too. It's just being out and I'll have headphones on. I walk around. Sometimes I'm just there to like see what's up. But always connecting and talking to people because every single time I meet someone, it's like, oh, whoa, we have this like insane connection that we never would have known like at all. So yeah, I mean, to me, it's like, I'm loving it. I think it's great and yeah. Honestly, this word on the street is like, Carrie has the biggest Rolodex in Miami oh, in geez. our entire scene here. Wow. She's just friends with everyone. And like anyone you meet, you're like, Carrie. And everyone's like, Carrie. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's cool. True. And like, that's such like, an, a, like a strong way to like foster community. And then A-Hole, you on the other side, um, you've always fostered community through your art, right? So you made this sort of like what's become like an iconic Miami image. I think you kind of like memed the Miami attitude before we knew what memes were. And that's kind of what the eyeball is. That's my hot take, honestly. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so through that, you know, like, you know, five, seven years ago, I was going to like your art shows, which were like in a field in the Everglades out of the back of a trunk. And you were like signing like cigarette wrappers and people were showing up and like loved anything that you would draw that eyeball on. You built a community physically presently like with your art which is just crazy impressive and then this crypto pandemic thing happened and everyone had to go inside and you built a, the community again online in your discord and there are nft projects that have millions and millions of dollars of venture capital that basically pumps activity into them they have like 10 people on staff and then they have like 10 people in some southeastern country just being like hi good morning da, 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 da. but your discord is way more active than any of those discords it's like if some of these vc guys were in your discord he, they would be like how does he get so much engagement and it's because you actually built a real community and those people feel like they have equity in your work and just like a really quick, because I, I, I want to hear your thoughts on how you did that, but um, Phaedra and I, when we went and got um, this amazing Tesla eyeball piece, <laughs> we met up with two people off your Discord, and at first we were like, oh, like, I don't know, like, we're just me, they're like in a random, like, back alley somewhere. They were like, come park closer to the house, park closer to the house. And I was like, oh, like, are we getting robbed? And we met two of the nicest people um, I've met in, like, weeks. And they hooked us up, and they gave us the down low on how to turn the uh, how to turn the work into an NFT. And like, they were uh, really great ambassadors of yours. And I just thought, like, man, a hole has just built such a S tier community. So I'm gonna stop talking. Like, how do you how do you feel like you did that, going from the art into online? Like, what are tips like for people that like wanna build a community like that? You know? Man, I honestly, I mean, that's a awesome compliment. Uh, but for sure, it's not me only. Uh, there's like a really awesome group of like moderators that are like friends and the idea is that like I'm not milking it like I'm just getting back I feel that what we're making is an addition to what I put out there I think that the whole idea of democratizing the art collecting process where people could feel that they have a piece of something is awesome whether it's a t-shirt a patch or something I came from nothing so I know what it is to like want to be a part of something other than just like oh i took a picture by a wall of his and it's on my background like that connection that whole like where i'm one of them is how it is like i think that that's what keeps people hyped up the fact that i mean i go into other discords too and what gets me hyped up is when the creator is in there and like like the toads or you know like even like the dick butts or shit like that like where there is engagement whether it's whether it's as much as what we give it but we're also like heavily Miami centric on it too. So I think as long as you make people feel like that they are a part of it and they know that they're a part of it, they're getting something and what they're getting is not like, like they're selling these things and they're encouraged to sell it any which way that they want. I want them to feel like for me, having the collection showing like there, like that's my reward. They're like, okay, these are the ones that made it through this crazy process and the people that have them, they're, they're extra down with me. You know what I'm saying? Like they, went through all this stuff for the sake of me built, putting something together and showing that it could be anything. It could be on a canvas or it could be on a paper bag, but me having to get out there and paint on stuff and I don't know, it, it just, me being like who I am is like kind of like how it, it automatically happens and making sure that I'm not like abusing that and you know, just feeding them whatever, like it's really cool. Like, like big up to the moderator dogs, Benji, uh, Dunker, Waxer, 
Freddy, and the Fafi. Shout out to the mods, yeah. mod love. And everybody else too that's in there. You're all special and like, I don't want to fuck anything up, so. You guys really are special. Like, honestly, I went in there the other day and uh, I saw that someone like sold his like Xbox 360, just like posted in the classifieds. I was like, oh my God, like A-Hole's got classifieds in here. Yeah, like, I try not to go in that section because like, I know what my stuff goes for, like in, on canvas and things like that. <clears throat> and I try not to see like desperation and things like that, but it is part of the thing. like them doing whatever they want is crucial, whether it's selling Xboxes or whatever, as long as it's not illegal. Sometimes people need money, you know what I mean? And you've like created a platform for people to be able to do that, you know what I mean? Trade their assets back and forth, and that's really cool. Thanks, you know? Doc, appreciate it. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, because didn't you say that somebody was able to pay rent off of that? A couple of them, yeah. and they're very outspoken about During it. During COVID hard times, you know, like this, it was a very interesting thing to see, especially like from my point of view, because I think I was one of the first people in the group um to watch it you know like to watch it explode and it's awesome like i love that everyone's just like so hyped all the time and they're all like oh have a good day whatever you're doing like go ride a bike and get out there and like they hype it you know like it's like a it's it's a, a cycle and it's like any time of the day i pop in there and somebody's up going to sleep just getting out of work what's up i saw this look at this sticker i mean it's like it's amazing what he's done you know it's it's really like um it's but authentic it's cool. and it's very genuine, you know? But it really, it's cool giving them their first, like, NFT, too. Like, so they hear those words or whatever, and they feel relevant in a way, whether it's through a piece of trash or whatever. Like, like my thing is to make sure that they're, like, when everybody was like, oh, you're fucking with a-holes trash, for them to be able to laugh at them at the end and be like, you know what? Like, you slipped. It was free. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, yeah, also... if with that trash i was part of this like cool community and you're right like whenever you go in there like it gets you you get amped up like i posted like a really basic clip of me skateboarding in there and someone <laughs> in your community was like yo i'll sponsor you dog i was yeah, like, right. I was like oh my right. god i love these people yeah, so yeah. much dog we gotta like, gas each other up one way or another with not false hope just real not shit like, yeah just being real and real it's like heads. it's like a, it's real heads it's real head shit and it's like it feels like a clubhouse for like for miami people and the miami people or the miami attitude like or the, the Miami lifestyle, I think. And, like, a Miami lifestyle that I associate with, like, the Miami, like, that I knew as opposed to the sort of what it's, like, sort of been where it is now. So, okay, so we'll talk about how much longer do we have in our interview here? Okay, cool. So we're going to do real head section. I'm going to go back and re-edit this to be a lot faster. <laughs> but but come up with your uh, best answers, and and it's okay to be confrontational and disagree with each other on the answer. I, I don't know. Bro. Most underrated... <laughs> Most uh, underrated place to eat in Miami. Underrated. Underrated okay. place to eat in Miami. Okay. Um, underrated. Underrated. Oh, my goodness. Where do you like to go that other people are like, what? Sorry. Oh, um, Gramps Pizza. I mean, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's, really that's like something like, <laughs> unless you know, like. Yeah, you can agree. Dude, the Gramps Pizza is what's up. <laughs> agree on that one. It's good. I don't drive, what so like, I don't get around there that much. But yeah. That is a good answer. Gramps Pizza. Um, I don't know. Mine is maybe Mike's, that, that dirty on the bar. Venetian? The yes. Yeah, that was a jam oh, yeah. when I used to oh drink, gosh, dog. That place. <laughs> that's like, like, that's yeah, like yeah, pub no, food. No, yeah. that's it was like, like a skybox of Flanagan's. Yes, yes, yes exactly. Yes, but you're yes, right up there. Honestly, a that place is really, that's a really magical place. Yeah. I feel like. um, okay, um, next one. Best nature within like, you know, 20, 25 miles of Miami. Like you want to spend the day Everglades. outside. Everglades. Everglades. Okay, yeah, Everglades. We're in the Everglades zone. Oh, all over. I'm like obsessed with the Everglades. I'm out there all the time because mm -hmm. I'm shooting. I shoot film, mm -hmm. so I've been working on a series for a few years now. So I go out there. I shoot um, black and white infrared film. So it's a very long process. And so I've been spending so much time out there, and it's so great to be out there and just quiet. Like to come from Wynwood, Everglades, and it's such a short drive. Like literally, you can be on the Loop Road, back to Wynwood, 36 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah. And they're complete and polar opposites. Complete opposite, but yeah. like super cool. All right, Aho, what about you? That's really cool, but it's really far. So, and I've been on the bike shit. So, like, just being able to leave downtown and go straight to Key Biscayne and, you know, get a ride in. So, that's fun, but I think uh, it's not the fun that people are wanting. Right. Well, I mean, Key Biscayne's beautiful. So, you won. Key oh, beautiful. oh, see, one click, but click. Wanna, uh, oh, Graham's Pizza, too. <laughs> All right, so let's talk. So let's talk about some work. Then you mentioned that you take photos in the Everglades. Like, what is some of the some of the stuff in your art practice right now, Carrie? <clears throat> well, my art practice is 
a blend of digital and um, analog. So I shoot a lot of film. I'm obsessed with black and white infrared. I've been shooting that for 20 plus years. Um, and it's just a, a very intensive process. But I'm so lucky now because in Wynwood there's a, a film processing place. So I literally can just walk there, drop off rolls of film. And it's cheaper now than it used to be 20 years ago. So I'm like, to me, it's hype. Like I can go and shoot five rolls and then come back, process it, get it the next day. And like, yeah, so that's what I'm working on. It's very, a lot of stuff that I do is landscape. It's like devoid of people, you know, like I'm like the opposite in certain ways because I kind of need that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I need that balance. Yeah, you need like, after networking with us so much, you just need like an empty plane. To totally. And that's why with. I travel a lot too. I go to places by myself, travel wherever, and just like I need that like mental break. And then I come right back to Miami and then I'm like, oh, bakehouse. Oh, there's a studio. Uh, there's this. I got to go here. Shake and bake. Yeah. Shake and bake. It's Jomo and FOMO. <laughs> What's Jomo? Joy of missing out. Right, right, right. Right? right. Like, no, I'm staying home. I never heard that. Jomo and FOMO. Jomo and FOMO. I will remember that. Um, A-hole, what about you? What are you working on right now? I mean, maybe talk about the Trash series a little bit, and maybe what you're working on next. Uh, I mean, I'm just painting and drawing every day for as much as I can, and that's what keeps me going, like, as far as money making and pushing it out there. But, like, I'm committed to the Trash thing, like, I'm riding, trying to ride the bike every day. What's the series proper? What's it called again? It's called Geographies of Trash, Art Cycling with A-Hole Sniffs Glue. Got it. <laughs> Geographies of Trash, yeah. Art Cycling with A-Hole Sniffs Glue. So it's, and it's being archived by uh, the FIU Wilsonian people, WPHL. Oh, so we're getting it on the blockchain shit and also on the FIU tip. So. And so what is the concept? And I know a lot of people out there know this, but there are probably some people that watch this that don't. What's the sort of concept of it <clears throat> where you find something, you know, you turn it into art, you leave it, and then you, you know, do what? Yeah, I mean, the idea is that I got to get a bike ride in every day. So me doing it is crucial. So if I'm out there, it's like, why not paint on stuff or put up stickers? So I'm dressed up like in a bike costume. So I'm not really intruding too much. I'm kind of invisible. So in between painting on stuff and putting up stickers, I'll see a nice cool piece of trash that I feel someone might want it for their house. And I take, like I'll paint it, I take a picture, leaving enough context where the people in that area would have a better chance of getting it to kind of like spread it out. And then I put it on Discord to give them the heads up in the landfill gallery. And then I wait a couple minutes and I put it on Instagram to give them some pressure. And then I put it on Twitter and that's like the final one. And then I keep on going. If it's the first time that they find one, then they're able to claim the NFT for free, like in the the Mint My Trash channel. If they're if it's more than one that they've had, then it's gamified, you know. So it'll be like like the other day, like yesterday, we did who's lost the most in crypto, and so that was a person that you know if they were willing to share it, we were willing to to mint their trash, and and it's me like doing it by hand, and that's so sick. So I feel that through all that stuff, that's plenty to to elevate a piece of trash and call it a piece of art and enough to kind of nudge it with some art value and then to let them do as they please and maybe they are sitting on millions. How many people do you think you've signed up for Web3? You know, you talked about giving people their first NFT, them feeling like they're part of like the current, like, you know, hundreds of people at this point. Well, probably. right now there's a hundred like 150 or 160 like unique wallets mm -hmm. um there's a ton of trash that's painted um a lot of people mm -hmm. don't even care about the nft part so for me it's kind of like making them jump through the hoop to get rewarded so it's there's just a ton of it like i've been hurt for two months so i haven't been able to actually ride as much as possible and just by going around like on different routes that i have to go do like i've been able to keep the project sustained as far as dropping new stuff but they're trading as the same way that like they hooked you guys up with a piece like for I, you know they know that the more people that have it the cooler that the thing is so like the people themselves are doing the work of spreading it out there i mean you could only have so much of it so like and i could i want to keep on riding the bike so it seems like it's just it works you know yeah yeah makes perfect sense all right lightning round to wrap it up <laughs> my bad dog. no you're good no you're perfect no that was a great answer honestly right, that was right, an right. amazing answer Thanks. um song that you're listening to right now that you want to recommend to the people at home man 
Otto's jam just came on, uh, came out. So like I've been jamming it these last couple uh, dog walks. Dog so walks, pretty cool. By Otto it's, called, I think it's called no, I think it's called a hotel. Hotel or something. Okay. But I just listen to a lot of different stuff. Cool. But I guess that one is relevant. And shout out to Otto. Shout out to Otto. Yeah. Ooh, Otto. Um, let me think. Um, I think what I just listened to recently is um, "Dead Zone" by Ladytron, mm. which I love that song. That's so. a good one. Yeah. Best cafecito window in Miami. If you want some croquetas. Then, uh, I mean, I think Enriqueta's is awesome when I do yeah. get around to it because they got the authentic, like, you have to ask for the the real croquetas. If not, they give you the frozen ones. So uh. I think they're I think they're both frozen, but they're uh. called the house croquetas. House croquetas. And their coffee okay. is, I think there's a lot of places. So there's like a mass-produced version. Yeah. There is. They look, like, they look different. You know, like when you get those pizzas, it look like all... Oh, and then people are like, those are the best. Like, these deformed croquetas are, like, really good. Enriquetas. There really is no second best, honestly, on, on, the, on the cafe window. Yeah, I'm going to back that. I don't know. I, that's Damn, not my thing, thanks. really. Man, I, I was trying to make you guys fight. You guys are agreeing <laughs> on everything. Fight. Yeah, I go with the flow. When um, it okay, to wrap it up, who is your favorite, like, local Miami artist right now, and what are they doing? Uh, visual artist or any musical? kind of artist they can do whatever whatever they I've always been like fascinated by Otto I mean I think that what he does like and how he gives back like in his by giving himself and he's always down for for cool stuff like he's like the shit in my opinion he really is the shit yeah. honestly he's a legend for sure. he's, he's like a performance artist like, he's beyond just like a musician he's just yeah. like very approachable too and I think that like as long as things are cool and it makes sense for him like he's a good dude and I respect that. Same as Tara. She's awesome, too. That's right. Holding it down with the foot on the gas all the time. Like, that's the the fast pace. Like, people that are, like, machine gunning it through that aren't just, like, looking forward to Basil. Like, those are the people that I fuck with. So, there's a lot of them. That's dope. That's dope. It's a good answer. All right, Karen. All right. I'm going to – there's a lot. But I'm going to have to say Lauren Shapiro over at the Bakehouse because – I've worked with her before. Um, I used to do Scope. I had a booth at Scope, and I've worked with her before. But I love that she works with ceramic, which is a very, like, you know, difficult medium. And um, I like that she's pushing this into tech. So she does a lot of, like, installation stuff, but now she's kind of, like, pushing those, like, fractal shapes and putting that into that tech component. And I think the, the, the merge of the ceramic with tech is, like, you know, something that not a lot of people are doing. So I like to see stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, y'all. This has been Miami Real Heads whoop, Volume whoop. 1. Whoop. Carrie, a-hole. Any last words? Anything else you want to say? Shout out, um, shout out. Biscuit 305. World, 305. Mod Dogs. Biscayne World, Discord. Yeah. Biscayne World, Discord. Go to the Discord. We'll, yeah, I got we'll a lot going on, there. but I'll be announcing probably another time. Yeah, because I got a yeah. shit. Awesome. All right, y'all. Thank you. No, man. Thank you, guys. Should I turn it off? Or